while you're standing, turn with me quickly to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. And, and I'm just reading that one verse on today. Very familiar passage of scripture um, that we've read before and that we've spoken about before. In the midst of all this going on today, God took me to this chapter, this verse to encourage someone's heart today. Just a simple word of encouragement. I don't expect for you to be long, but be long before you on this morning. I believe God has already broken some of the yokes that were in the house, and God has already released some of the shackles that were in the house. But I need to give a word of encouragement to remind the people of God that it ain't over until God declares that it's over. First Samuel chapter thirty, verse six makes this simple de declaration. It says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. For a few moments, as I've already told you, I would like to preach from the topic it ain't over. Hallelujah. It's, it's amazing to me, people of God, that um, as we go forward in the month of August, the month of August has been our month of new beginnings. God has been with us daily um, in prayer. I don't know if you all were able to join us on Friday, but the men c culminated a great two weeks of prayer with Elder Schamberger praying and praying the house down. Hallelujah. The anointing was so fresh on the call that it released shackles and loose ties that bind because we're looking and have a great expectation for God to do something new in the midst of us here at Praise Center. Yes, I know um, that we've been in the month and we already at, are at day 14, but God is still declaring that he's willing to do something new in our lives. He's willing to do it right now and that we don't have to worry about what it is that needs to be done because his word says and that I will make a way in the wilderness and send rivers in the midst of desert places. That that means we don't have to worry, but as much as we have been declaring the promises of God and as much as we have been um, identifying that when we put the word of God into, into the atmosphere, it puts uh, pressure on the devil to try to come up against us and, do, and be the obstacle that he wants to be. And so I've noticed that as we've been going in this month of new beginnings and looking for something new, I've noticed that the enemy has come up against us very greatly greatly and very strongly. I don't know about you all, but there's been some quite difficult and, and amazing challenges that some of you all and the people of God has been facing in the midst of the month of new beginnings. And I warned you all, and it's just the true manifestation of the word of God, that when we stand on the word of God and God is ready to do something new in the midst of us, the enemy will come up against us to try to prevent us from moving forward to the next level. If he can cause us to fail the test that we have that we're taking right now if he can fail cause us to fail uh, to focus in on God and allow God to be the source of our strength and the strength of our lives what will end up happening is we'll remain at the place where we're at when God has already called us to another level in him we're facing so many different challenges and these challenges has has caused me to be weary. Hallelujah. I don't know if you all have noticed I've been praying a little bit harder in this month. I know I pray hard normally, but I've been praying a little bit harder because there are some difficulties that some of you all are facing that I, as a man, don't know how to answer. Hallelujah. I hope you all are praying for me today. I don't have the answer to some of y'all's issues that you got going on. My only answer is that we've got to continue to hope and trust in the Lord our God. He is the only one that can save us, and he is the only one that can make a way out of no way. Some of us are facing marital issues and I could never imagine that in this issue, in these days and times where people are living right and doing that which is right in the eyesight of God that they would have to face marital issues in their lives but we're dealing with that season where there's a form of godliness in some of these families and they don't have the power that's needed, hallelujah, to do that which is right, hallelujah. Some of us are facing financial difficulties struggling with financial issues 
issues that it seems like they come out of nowhere and it doesn't make it doesn't make sense hallelujah that we're dealing with some of the financial issues that we're dealing with hallelujah I've trusted God and I believe God but in the midst of me saying that and doing that it seems like lack is just hovering around me and hanging on to me hallelujah it's holding on to the bottom of my pants and I'm trying to shake the lack spirit off of me but it seems like it won't won't let me go hallelujah some of us are dealing with physical issues in the name of Jesus God and I'm going to continue to declare missionary Miller that that sciatica nerve whatever it is it's called it's been named and we're going to bind and come up against that devil and that sickness and that illness right now but some of us are dealing with physical issues hallelujah and they seem like they should not be here I'm dealing with things that I don't understand where they're coming from it's a season that the enemy is trying to come up against us and to steal and to kill and to destroy so not only are we dealing with marital issues issues in our homes financial issues physical issues but if we can be uh, true to ourselves we're also facing spiritual issues as well these spiritual issues are coming against us and trying to and causing us to get more intimate in our seasons of prayers causing us to become more fervent in our seeking of the word it's spiritual issues because your spirit man wants to be able to grow but many of us don't have the wherewithal to press past and push forward and to hold on to God and continue to go further in this season because God is trying to do something new in our lives so we're dealing with things that are going on in our lives and I understand and I've come to the understanding that these challenges are not normal not only are they not normal, but they're not simple as well. And it's amazing that the very appearance of these difficulties, difficulties in our marriages, difficulties in our finances, difficulties in our home, difficulties on our job, these things that are not simple, but they're here, they come to stack the odds against us and cause us to be, to have this uh, a thought or mind that we're being overwhelmed by living this life that we are living. Hallelujah. And not only are it, does it appear that we're being overwhelmed, it gives us the appearance that our hope is fruitless. And when a Christian, when a believer, when someone who has been called out of darkness has no hope, hallelujah, that God can make a way, has no hope that God can open up the door, that God has, that has no hope that God can turn their situation around, then they are one of uh, most despair, without any hope, without any plans, without any idea on how they're going to make it through in these days and times. But the very appearance of these challenges, when we've been discussing and declaring that God is doing something new in our lives just proves to be uh, that the word of God is true. I understand it's reverse psychology but you've got to understand and you've got to be able to see it before you can see it and you've got to be able to believe it before you see the manifestation of it that the challenges that we are facing in this life today is just a manifestation that God is true to his word and that his word will come to pass. John 16 and 33 warns us and tells us as believers as those that walk according to the promises of God that in this world as long as you're living in this world ye shall have tribulations so that means that as long as you're living life hallelujah hallelujah as long as you are alive as long as you're breathing as long as you can clap as long as you can make some noise as long as you can do whatever it is that proves that you are alive the Bible warns us and tells us that Jesus said you're going to have tribulations but but Timothy in Paul's declaration to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 he takes it a little bit further not only uh, did Jesus say that we should have tribulations but in 2 Timothy Paul declares yea all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution it's not just tribulations that we have to deal with as believers of God but we also have to face persecution as well persecutions and some trials and tribulations that come to you that you know you don't deserve that you know uh, should not come your way that you know should not even be named to be come up against the believers of God but we are facing persecution unjust persecution ungodly persecution difficult challenges and for many of us it's causing us to lose hope in God and as I've lived life I've noticed that when these odds, it seems like the devil is stacking up odds against us. One moment we have this, and then the next moment something else comes. And it sounds like I'm repeating this, another message, but it's true. And I need to remind somebody today that even when the odds are stacked against you, 
You've got to be able to believe God. You can't concede the fight. You can't give up hope. You cannot throw in the towel because if you quit in the midst of adversity, if you quit in the midst of challenges, if you quit in the midst of trials and tribulations and afflictions, you'll never get to experience the fullness of God's promises and the joy that comes with hoping in God and standing on his word and waiting on the Lord to do what God says that he's going to do. Tell yourself today it ain't over. No matter what it looks like, no matter what may be going on in your life you got to remind yourself it ain't over hallelujah what the devil meant for evil God says I will work it together for your good and you must declare that it ain't over hallelujah the doctor comes with a report that you're not looking for it hallelujah I went to the doctor last week hallelujah and looking for a report and I still ain't heard from the doctor yet hallelujah I believe it's something major but I don't know uh, I trust that God has already uh, completed the work in me hallelujah in the midst of it the doctor's report are coming back but you you got to tell yourself that it ain't over hallelujah in our scripture text this morning i said i won't be before you long uh, david found himself in a position of great stress hallelujah he found himself in a position of great distress he found himself in a position of great distress because in the midst of him traveling back from battle or black from trying to go in the battle he found himself in a place of despair and hopelessness david was a mighty man of god you all know david's story David was a man after God's own heart when he was a young lad he was anointed to be king of Israel hallelujah Saul the king at the time did something unrighteous in the eyesight of God and God took away his spirit and his anointing and told uh, Samuel the prophet to go down to uh, where David was and uh, Bethlehem I forgot where David was at telling him to go down where David was at and anoint the young lad that I'm going to tell you to anoint and it just so happened that after Samuel went through all the brothers he came down to David and that was the one that God anointed hallelujah you got to understand that you've been anointed for this season tell yourself I've been anointed for this season hallelujah you got to remind yourself you've been anointed for this season God didn't bring you here just to leave you but he's anointed you and you have been prepared for the challenge challenges that you are facing today you've got to remind yourself I've been prepared for this hallelujah because the Bible declares that God won't put no more on me than I can bear and if God is not willing to put more on me than I can bear that means that he understands that I have the strength to make it in these days and times hallelujah David was prepared for this season David was prepared for this challenges because he had a story David had been through the storms and the rain David been through challenges he had uh, to fight a lion he told the king, King Saul, he said I had to fight a lion one time. They came and swooped in and took one of my father's sheep and I slew the lion. Not only did I slay the lion, but I also slew a bear as well when a bear swooped in. And this uncircumcised Philistine that you all are worried about hallelujah, uh, they can't compare he cannot compare to the God that we serve. It seems like each challenge, each affliction took David to another level. Hallelujah. Just think of the story. Just look back at David's story. David didn't just get into this point of distress uh, 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 by happenstance but each round that David went to it called for a greater anointing and it called for David to go to another level after he fought the bear and the lion he came before the king hallelujah and the bear and the lion prepared him to fight hallelujah Goliath if he had never been through that difficulty if he had never been uh, in that challenge he wouldn't have had the boldness to understand that God would make a way out of no way even as the challenges become greater and greater and some of us are dealing with circumstances in our lives some of us are dealing with situations in our lives and if we really would take time to look back hallelujah they didn't come upon us unaware hallelujah they came uh, according to the season that God ordained for them to come help me let me help somebody today everything that you're going through God knows what you're going through it's nothing that's happening in the dark or behind the doors that God does not know about but he knows what you're doing in your bed room hallelujah he knows what you're doing in your closet and he knows it hallelujah so far in advance that he knows it before you actually even do it or allow it to come into fruition in your life hallelujah God knows and if you understand
understand that God knows he knows how much you can bear and he knows where you're going to give up hope and he knows when he needs to show up in a great and mighty way each round that David went through it took him higher and into a greater calling and a greater anointing the bear and the lion hallelujah got him in front of the king and after he got in front of the king he killed um, Goliath and after he killed Goliath that took him in front of the people it made his name great uh, that the women of Israel were declared that Saul slayed his thousands but David slayed his ten thousands hallelujah each challenge allowed David to become greater and greater in the eyesight of God and also in the eyesight of men well what does that have to do with me pastor today I'm here to encourage someone today to stop lamenting over your trial stop lamenting over your heartache stop lamenting over these things that are coming your way that's causing you to be distressed these things that you that God allows to come into your life are there not to kill you but they're there to make you stronger if God wanted to kill you guess what God can call you on and tell you to stop breathing just that quick it don't take that long hallelujah for God to say stop breathing and breath and life will go out of you but if you're still here today and if you're still dealing with the challenges you've got to know that we all that all things work together for your good you've got to understand it's going to work out after a while you just need to hope in God and remember that it ain't over until God says that it's over David found himself in a bit of calamity because he used to rely upon people hallelujah after in this situation in his life David disconnected himself from God hear me out in first Samuel chapter 27 it tells us that David found himself being chased by Saul he became frustrated that Saul was continuously trying to kill him and instead of remaining where God told him to stay he decided to go into the land of the Philistines those people that he continued to slay and those that he continued to beat upon it's amazing that God will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies hallelujah and it just so happened that God did this that's why David was able to to give that Psalm 23 that he will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies because David experienced it in this day and time he went outside of the will of God and found comfort in the place of the pagans and in the midst of those that did not serve God David resided you've got to understand that you can't find comfort in the midst of sin hallelujah when you've been called out of darkness into your and hit marvelous light you can't allow sin to remain in the house you've got to kick those things that are cause you to be tainted out you got to remove those things that are cause your faith not to hold on because what they do is they sap away your strength they sap away your hope hallelujah they sap away your focus in on God and that's where David found himself in first Samuel chapter 30 he found himself in a place where he was all alone and he could not rely upon God or he at least was not relying upon God the way that he should have relied upon God and so God allows something to come his way if you take time to read through first samuel 28 and 29 you'll find that david as he was with them in the midst of the philistines he did unruly things he would go to nations and slay nations hallelujah he would go to nations and not only would he allow uh, would he uh, slay the nation or destroy the nation but he would leave no man and he would leave no woman alive in those nations but here here it comes where david is not home he left his place that he needed to guard he left the place of importance that he needed to protect him and god showed him mercy hallelujah because it didn't not come back to him what he actually put out who help me holy ghost today and let the people get it what he deserved david did not get back in return hallelujah david went to nations and he slayed and did not leave no men and he did not leave no woman alive but when david was gone from home guess what god still showed him mercy even though he was not righteous at this time because the bible declares in in first samuel 30 that when the amalekites came they burned the town but they did not slay a woman they did not slay any children they left all of God of David's people alive and he kept them covered that's just a promise that no matter where you might find yourself at God's plan for you is still yay and amen no matter how far you may fall away from God and no matter how far you may fall short of God's glory God's mercy and his grace is unto everlasting unto everlasting and so God you've got to remember Remember, David found himself in a place of isolation. He was not long, no longer with.
with the people of God. He was no longer in the household of faith. He was no longer in a place of safety, but he found himself in a place of safety that was not ordained by God. And while he was in this place that was not ordained by God, God's favor and God's love and God's compassion and his mercy did not fail David and found David exactly where he was at. But David could not go forward relying upon man. God, he would not allow David to continue to do great things relying upon his own might. So God took away all of those things. Help us, Holy Ghost, today. He took away all those things that he can rely upon. And the only thing and the only one that David can rely upon was on God. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that he was greatly distressed. Hallelujah. Because his wives had been taken away. It says that he was greatly distressed because his children can be have been taken away. Some of us make our spouses our gods. Hallelujah. Some of us make our children our gods. Some of us make our jobs our God. But God, at one point, if you don't get it together, God's going to remove those things so that you'll make him alone your God. He says, I don't want you to have any other gods before me. I want to be your one and only. Hallelujah. I want you. I want to be your only love, your only true love that you come to first in everything and seek after me in everything so David can go and get comfort from his wives. Wives, hallelujah. Men, we only have one wife today. Let me throw that in there and keep on going. We only have one wife, not multiples. We barely can handle the one we got. We surely don't need another one. Not help us, Holy Ghost, today. Let me keep on preaching. Hallelujah. He could not get joy from coming to his children. Many fathers, we like to come home from work and we love when our children come in and say, Daddy, Daddy, welcome home hallelujah I know they don't do that uh, today but we used to do that when we were younger when daddy got home we ran to the door and welcomed daddy home but but David could not rely upon his children encouraging him and the love of his children helping him to regain his strength and, and not only could not could David not rely upon his wives and not rely upon his children but David could not even rely upon the people that were with him these great men of war hallelujah went with David David and a slain nation and they destroyed people hallelujah they were great and mighty in their battling but when they came back and, and their families were gone they had no hope and they only wanted to blame the person that they saw as the cause of the issue hallelujah so David didn't even have his boys with him anymore his boys didn't have his back no more and some of us have found ourselves with our friends that we used to believe would always be with us would never leave us would always be there to encourage us and always be there to uplift us he found that they were gone and some of us are facing those things that we thought were true and that we thought would never fail us have failed us in these days and times but tell yourself today it ain't over hallelujah family not may not be with you but it ain't over hallelujah my finances may not be where I want them to be but it ain't over today until God says that it's over so when all hope was gone David had to encourage himself in the Lord he could not find solace in his friend he could not find strength in his loved ones he could not find a, a restoration in anything else but God so David went back to what he was used to that's why you got to put something in you so in the day of calamity and in the day of despair you can hold on to something when everything else has caused you to fail who do you turn to when your soul is overwhelmed where do you run to when your soul is challenged and faced with difficulties I urge you today you've got to lean upon the rock today yeah Yes, God today I want to go to the rock because the rock is higher than I hallelujah uh, missionary Miller said in Psalm 43 42 and 11 he says why art thou cast down in me oh my soul why art thou forsaken in me we've got to remember that God is the one that can do anything for us he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think is according to the power that works inside of us you've got to know that God has already placed something in you come here brother Corey, you've got to understand and know that God has already made a way. You've got to understand that God is the one that says, I am the great I am. And whatever it is that you need from God, he said, I can be that 
and more. He said, I'll make a way in the wilderness. That means when things come up and call you not to be able to see God, he says, I'll knock down those trees. You got men that are standing up against you. You got women that are standing up against you. And if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he said, I'll drop those trees down. He said, I'll make a way in the midst of wilderness. Let the trees continue to grow. Let the billows continue to roll because we have a savior that is great. And the psalmist said that he's sweet. I know David found himself in the midst of distress because his soul was overwhelmed. And not only was his soul overwhelmed, the people's souls were overwhelmed as well. What do you do when your soul is overwhelmed? You've got to buckle up and bear down and say, I've got to live today. No matter what comes my way, I choose to live life. And instead of complaining and instead of finding himself overwhelmed, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said, it ain't over. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad it looks in your situation. you got to declare it ain't over until God said it is over. I may be sick in my body, but it ain't over today. I may be overwhelmed by trials and tribulations, but it ain't over today because the God that I serve, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than I can ever ask or think, and he's already placed that power inside of me, so I got to live with power today. You can't live in your own power, and you cannot live in your own might, but you need power to make it today. Power to hold on to God. Power to live right in these days and times. You need power. Power to walk right and, and power to talk right. You need some power. So David pulled on his power. He pulled on the only place he can get power from and his help. He said all of my help all of my help coming from the Lord. The God who made heaven and the God who made earth. He said my help coming from the Lord. The God who sits high and looks low. He said my help coming from the Lord and David encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he encourage himself in the Lord when his family was gone? How did he encourage himself in the Lord when everybody turned their backs on him? How did he encourage himself in the Lord? He encouraged himself by magnifying God. He encouraged himself by calling on the name of the Lord. He he encouraged himself by declaring for God I live and for God I'm going to die. What do I need to do to be encouraged in these days and times. You need to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You need to look unto God, the Alpha and the Omega. You need to look unto God, the finisher of our faith. David encouraged himself in the Lord. When everybody else turned their backs on him, David looked to the Lord. And when David looked to the Lord, God had a word. Do you need a word from the Lord today? I encourage you to look unto the Lord. He says you can do it today. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He said look to the Lord. Stop leaning into your own understanding. If you look to the Lord, he'll give you the guidance. How do I make the way? God says I'll make the way. How do I go through the door? God said I'll open up the door. How do I make ends meet? He said I will supply all of your needs according to my riches up in glory. How do I make it today when my soul is overwhelmed? You've got to say I'm not going to give up. I won't throw in the towel because it's not over until God says it is over. David found himself greatly distressed. He found himself greatly distressed because of life. And many of us are dealing with life circumstances and we find ourselves not able to get the strength that we need. David in the midst of calamity, David in the midst of distress, pulled something from within and said, I got to hope in God. And because he hoped in God, God answered him and God showed him that he would recover all. Many of us have lost things in this season. How is it, God? that I'm living right, play softly, how is it God, that I'm leaning on you, how is it God, that I'm facing so many challenges, when you keep speaking greatness in my life. David was anointed to be king. He faced challenges from the king at the time. He faced challenges from the people that he was against. He faced challenge for those that walk that walk with him, but that did not de- deny or declare or stop God's promises from coming to fruition. 
What I'm simply saying is God has already spoken life into your situation. He's already spoken victory into your situation. God has already spoken the way. He said, because you shall not die, I'm declaring that you shall live. And if God declares that I'm going to live, that means that whatever I'm going through, God is going to allow me to make it through and I'm going to live. I don't care what it is. I don't care how great the challenge. I don't matter how difficult it is. You got to tell yourself it ain't over. I don't care if it's a disconnection notice. It ain't over. I don't care if it's a foreclosure. It ain't over. I don't care if it looks like all hope is gone. You got to declare it to your situation. It ain't over. 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 Because God has spoken light into me. And after David encouraged himself in the Lord, I done went through the, I ain't looked at none of these notes. You got to understand that trials come to prune you. Afflictions come, I got to say this and I'm getting out of here. They come to prepare you for the next level. If you're not challenged, you're not prepared for the next level. So you've got to go through because it's a pruning process. And that pruning process causes you to only hope in God. Stop relying upon what's in your bank. That stuff ain't going to stay there forever. Me and Lady Yo, we were rolling in some big dollars a couple of years ago. Savings account was fat. I looked at that savings account the other day and I'm like, oh God, where did it go? Oh, I guess I can't rely upon that no more. Can't rely upon the job. Jobs come and go. I, I, I've been working on a job for a long time. But it was a young man that was on our project. That had seen, he was there on Friday. Guess what? He had been fired Friday morning. I mean, Monday morning. We were looking for the young man. Didn't have no clue what was going on. We only saw a notice. I'm in, I'm in IT. We only saw a notice to disconnect his account. Where did he go? He was working good on Friday. What happened between Friday night and Monday morning? Jobs ain't guaranteed. Your health ain't guaranteed. So you've got to let it go and trust God through the process. Trust God through the process. David once declared, and I believe it's in Psalm 20 and 7, and I'm ending here. He says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 20 and 7, just in case you want to write that down. Stop trusting in chariots. Stop trusting in horses. Stop trusting in men. Hope thou in God. He's the one that's going to make and bring you through He's the one that's going to make a way. And he's the one that's going to give you the audacity to declare it ain't over. I'm resting on your feet real quick. I'm a lover of football. One of the greatest things that happened in a football game, game could be great, but one of the greatest activities in a football game is a play called the Hail Mary. It's a play that's doomed to fail. It's a play that's doomed to fail, right, Brother Cassidy? There's no, it's a rarity that the Hail Mary pass is actually completed. But the team that's throwing the Hail Mary against all the odds, the defense will line up 20 or 30. I know it's only 11 on the field, but it seems like they got 20 or 30 people at the goal line trying to stop them from catching the pass. And it just so happens that sometimes the offensive team catches the ball and wins the game. What would have happened? If they gave up hope before they threw the ball what would have happened if they said we just gonna kneel and give up and not even attempt to win the fight that's what we as believers have to declare that we're gonna still throw the ball in spite of what the odds that are stacked against us because our hope is in God and no matter what the enemy throws against us to try to stop us God said I'm still going to get the glory out of this how do I know because the Bible says that Jesus was hung up on Good Friday hallelujah and he was wounded battered beaten and bruised he was hung up on a cross hallelujah and even though he was hung up on the cross and died hallelujah 
and was buried the devil thought that he won the fight hallelujah the devil was celebrating on Friday night because God Jesus himself was still in the grave on Saturday morning and Saturday night yes he was still in the grave but on that Sunday morning hallelujah the devil lost the fight he thought that he had to fight one but we that believe know that Jesus got up on the third day yes God didn't have to throw Hail Mary because he already spoke that it was going to happen you got to know that in spite of the odds that are stacked against you God says that you're going to live and it ain't over until God says that it's over keep fighting keep praising keep worshiping God keep trusting God and if you hold on and don't let go and declare that it ain't over God's going to show you something great and mighty which you know it not he's going to come true with his word sister Namalimi, sister Dorothy God's going to make a way I'm putting it into the atmosphere God is going to make a way the obstacle seems great I heard the number I don't know where it's going to come from I don't have the answer as pastor but my only answer I can give you is that God has to make a way trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your pathways my dear sister it's going to be okay hallelujah you've come to the right place today sister Tiffany at the right time for the right moment to get the word that you needed I don't know what's going on in your life but this word was for you my sister Tiffany declare it ain't over let the level know it ain't over until God said that it's over now God we thank you hallelujah and we bless you God because you're not like man that you should lie but you are a man of your word you are a God that does things that blow our minds and your word tells us that you know the thoughts that you think towards us. It's not to kill us. It's not to deny us. It's not to cause us to fail, but it's to prosper us and to give us an expected end. Help us to trust you, Lord, in the midst of afflictions, in the midst of trials, in the midst of storms. Help us to hold on to you and not lose focus in on you because you're able to do anything but fail. God, thank you for never failing. Whether there are prophecies, those things shall fail. Whether there be tongues, those things shall cease. But your love will never fail. And God, thank you for your love today. Your love that is consuming. Your love that is simply amazing. I encourage these, your people. Help them to hold on to you in spite of the winds that blow in their lives. Let us not throw in the towel before it is due. But you said in your word in Isaiah 40 and 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And not only will their strength be renewed, but they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and faint not. And we speak that light into us today as we wait upon you. But while we wait, God, we declare that you said that you're doing something new in our lives. And not only are you doing it new, but you're doing it right now. And because you can do it right now, we don't have to worry and fear that it's not going to happen. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight and trust to see the salvation of the Lord. And it is so even now in the name of Jesus now bless us hide this word in our hearts that as we go through this season we're going to continue to declare your word and your promises and your word tells us that it ain't over and we thank you for the victory today we shall be victors not victims and we thank you for the victory being ours already and it's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. I need you to move out your seat and declare it ain't over. Just move around the building. Just walk around in the building. Come on, sister, now let me move, move, move. Walk around and declare it ain't over. It ain't over until God says it's over. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. It ain't over. If you're online, get up out your seat. Get up out your bed and walk around your house and declare it ain't over. It ain't over because God has spoken life. God said I can live and not die. It ain't over. And we declare it now. We put the devil on notice. You've been defeated. You are a defeated foe. I am the head.
lender and not the tail. I am the lender and not the borrower. Yes, I am who God says that I am. And I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It ain't over. I shall live and not die. It ain't over. Yes, God, it ain't over. Because God has spoken life. God has spoken life. God has spoken life. It ain't over. Hallelujah. It ain't over. It ain't over. Because what the devil meant for evil, God says, I'm going to turn it around for your good. We have too many stories in the Bible where God has performed a miracle. There's no way that David should have made it out of the pit into the palace. But God did that. There's no way that the children of Israel should have walked across the Red Sea on dry land. But they did it. There's no way that the walls of Jericho should have come tumbling down. But God did it. It ain't over. Hallelujah. I don't know who needs to hear this today. But you don't quit. Don't go in the towel. Don't give up hope. Hope thou in God. Woo! Tell yourself I got a hope in God. I got to hold on to God. I, I, I can't let him go. I'm not going to let him go until he bless me. I'm not going to let him go until he turn it around. I'm not going to let him go until he bless my soul. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, bless me, Lord, bless me. Woo! Bless me, Lord. I'm the one that's in need. I need a breakthrough. I need a blessing. Bless me, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. It ain't over. It ain't over. I don't care what it looks like. It ain't over. I don't care what's going on. It ain't over. The enemy is going to continue to stack the odds against you. He's going to continue to do it. But the more odds he stack, the greater the miracle that God is going to perform. That's why the program cover says, I need a miracle. A miracle. I need a miracle, God. And the only one who can perform the miracle is God. The president can't do it. Your bank account can't do it. Your spouse can't do it. You got the hope down in God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> glory glory I feel chains breaking hallelujah I feel shackles loosed I feel doors being open it's already done in Jesus name I declare healing I see it even now miracles signs and wonders do it God do it Lord do it Lord Jesus miracles 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 Miracles, miracles, signs and wonders. <laughs> yeah, God, you can use me. You can use me. God, as long as you don't leave me, as long as you don't forsake me, I'll go through. I'll go through. Yes, I'm willing to be used. Jesus. Don't allow the devil to steal your joy. Don't allow the devil to steal your focus, your victory. You are already a winner. The door is already opened. It's just waiting for you to walk into your season of manifestation. David encouraged himself in the Lord and God gave him direction and as God gave him direction David recovered all 
And not only did David recover all, but he recovered more than what he lost. So whatever it is that the enemy has stolen from you, it's coming back. Sometimes it may be double, but I just tell you it's going to be more. Job got double. David got more. Hallelujah. And when you get it back, it's going to allow you to be a blessing to those that come your way. That's going to hear of your story and say that if God can do it for you, God can definitely do it for me as well. Thank you, God, today. It ain't over until God declares that it's over. Hallelujah. Now, Father in heaven, I thank you. I bless you. I glorify you for the manifestation of your word. Let your word spring forth as life into the hearts and the minds of those that heard the word today. Whether they're in the church or they're online or they play, they hear the replay. Come through with your word and show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty on our behalf. We'll bless you. We'll thank you. And we'll give you the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to our worship service here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We pray that something was said or done that encouraged you, that empowered you, that strengthened you on this day. Now it is time for us to give you an opportunity to sow into the life of ministry here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. And there are multiple ways that you can give. First, you can give via Cash App by giving to Dollar Praise Center VA. You also can visit our website, PraiseCenterKojic.org. Click on the giving link and it will allow you to give via our website. You also can go to PayPal for those that like to use PayPal and send your donation to info at PraiseCenterKojic.org. And then last but not least, you can give via GiveLify by searching for Praise Center Church of God in Christ in Dumfries, Virginia. Make sure you see my face or Lady Yo's face on the image and you will be giving or donating to the right location. We pray again that you were blessed by our service and we want to let you know by you seeding into the life of Praise Center Church of God in Christ, we're going to declare blessings be upon you. God says, when we give, it shall be given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We speak blessings to be in your life as you have sown into good soil here at Praise Center Church. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.